Hey, it's Debbie Potts, and I am going to do another podcast on my story and understanding why I do what I do to help people similar to myself that are struggling with addiction to busyness. High performers, type A, triple A personality where you thrive on more is better. Well, for some of us, that only works for so long. And if you're hopefully watching the video, here is what the progression of HPA axis dysfunction and cortisol dysregulation looks like. We call this HPA axis is hypothalamus, sends a signal to the pituitary gland, to the adrenal gland. And over time, this signal gets to be nonstop goes from acute distress to chronic distress. And if you learn enough about hormetic stress, hormesis, what is the benefit of cold plunges every day? What's the benefit of heat stress in a sauna? What's the benefit of strength training and breaking down your muscle? It's acute stressor. Intermittent fasting, acute stressor. But when we do anything too much, it can lead to chronic distress. As I always say, there's a balance. There's a Goldilocks effect. Too little stress is not great. Too much stress is not great either. What is the right dose of a stressor that is beneficial for you and will not lead to dysfunction in your body? Imbalances, dis-ease. This is why I do what I do because my story that I will write a new edition in 2025, life is not a race, it is a journey. And my story I wanted to dive into a little bit deeper because a lot of you are not familiar with it. It's been a while, but it's kind of just recently started to get better since the pandemic where I completely changed my life moving from Bellevue, Washington to North San Diego, inland from Solana Beach, Del Mar, Encinitas, near Rancho Santa Fe, kind of in nature half the day, most of the day. And I went back to look at my blogs on my website. What did I write in 2013 when all of this started to happen? I had all these red flags of too much stress. So here's what I wrote in a blog post when I started to share my journey, my struggles with fatigue, exhaustion, weight gain, sleep, just muscle breakdown. Here's what I wrote in June, 2013, knowing that I just finished my best race season in Ironman marathons, 50 K trail running. I just did my best in everything. 2012, 2013, January, I did a marathon in Carlsbad. Uh, February, I did a 50 K trail run in Bellingham, Washington. March, I remember I was at Ben Greenfield Superhuman Coach Conference that we just had once in Spokane, Washington, and had all these speakers as Rhonda Collier and Heart Rate Variability. Dave Asprey was just starting out. He was speaking. We had, um, gosh, what's the guy on the cold plunge, what cold thermogenesis. So this is the cutting edge of all this information. But during that time, I realized something was wrong with me. And I just was finishing a superhuman course, talking about heart rate variability and starting to touch on adrenal fatigue. And I realized, Hmm, this is what I'm experiencing. So here's what I wrote in that June. I'm on a mission to understand why adrenal exhaustion stage three causes your body to gain fat daily. Dr. Kalish has a great book as well as Dr. Sarah Godfrey. These three systems need to be in balance hormones, digestion, and detox, detoxification systems. When you have adrenal exhaustion, stage three, as we used to call it, cortisol levels are low and your DHA levels are even lower, creating serious 
hormonal imbalances resulting in fatigue, depression, and weight gain. I'm not depressed, but only extra stress related to my ever-growing thunder thighs and extra folds around the waistline. Remember, I gained 30 pounds this June 2013. I just finished Ironman Hawaii, 70.3 World Championships. Yes, I was doing a lot of races. Every month I did a race, which is why I always talk to people and say, okay, pay attention to those red flags when you start doing all these races back to back to back. Now, I wrote the health consequences related to the high ratio of cortisol to DHA affected my blood sugar control, immune function, liver detoxification, tissue health, hormone balance. How do I recover? I keep working on delegating my work at my fitness studio, Fitness Forward, deep nasal breathing, nature walks, and practicing yoga. How does an athlete and fitness trainer not be depressed when they can't train or race, but especially when their bodies are changing and you can't fit in your clothes anymore? Heart rate variability testing I was doing daily. Thanks to Rhonda Collier, I did a beta test for them. What a new experience 2013 will be for me. This is a blog post. If you go to my website, debbiepotts.net, I just search in the blogs, go back to the year 2013. And maybe it's not interesting to you, but for me, it's going to walk back. This is definitely the old me and going back into what I struggled with for so long until 2020 when I moved. My story of adrenal exhaustion serves as a core part of my health and wellness, my mission, my purpose. I wrote my book, Life is Not a Race. It is a journey to share my struggles. I had one bad review saying she was bragging about her racing. Absolutely not. It was more, look at what happened, where I came from and look at where I am now. I did a 312 marathon in Boston. That's not bragging. It's just, I barely can run even today, 10 miles. It takes me two hours. So it's more that I went from way high fitness level and speed of endurance, strength and speed to not being able to do anything. And I still struggle with running since then. And I think it's more structural on the cellular level. And then I did 345 in a marathon in an Ironman. So I wasn't bragging. I was just trying to make a point of here I am six months later, look at what happened. So I put in this blog post, a bunch of videos that I was trying to find because someone was asking me, what were your red flags? What were you struggling with? So it kind of motivated me to put this together for someone's wife. So let me know if this resonates with you. In my book, I searched summary of what I wrote. It's pretty funny. What you can do nowadays with uh, chat GPT. In my book, Debbie describes her battle with adrenal exhaustion and how her high-performance lifestyle, which included competing in Ironman triathlons, marathon running, and coaching, eventually led to burnout. I did 15 Ironmans. Part of that is because I qualified for Ironman Hawaii, and then you would do another. So you end up doing two Ironmans a year, and then I'd always do at least one marathon. And... I started Ironman 2001 was my first race. Ironman Canada and Ironman Coeur d'Alene. And then I would do Ironman Hawaii. And I still go to Ironman Hawaii. Even actually this year I'm going. It's part of my life. It's my blood. So what led me to burnout? I was constantly pushing my body to its limits without sufficient rest or recovery. Over time, this relentless pace of life caught up with me or her, me. She experienced what describes as adrenal exhaustion or as FDM practitioners, we say the term metabolic chaos is the breakdown of multiple body systems due to chronic stress. I explain, all right, Debbie explains her journey that started with fatigue, sleep disturbances, mood changes, 
but eventually it spiraled into a complete health crisis. She discovered that despite doing all the quote unquote right things in terms of fitness and nutrition, the chronic stress and overtraining were wreaking havoc on her body, leading to hormone imbalances, gut issues, eventually adrenal dysfunction. This forced her to reevaluate her approach to health and fitness, realizing that life is not a constant racing and that balance, recovery, and self-care are crucial. Now, I've written tons of blog posts. That's why ChatGPT <laughs> summarized me. It's very freaky what they know about me online, and they're not even people, whoever the GPT people. Podcasts, I've been interviewed on different shows. On my own podcast, I've had... Since John Smith and I started it 12 years ago, we called, I was a guest on his show. It was called the Garden Variety Show. And then he wanted me to co-host Fit Fat Fast with him back in 2012, I think it was, or 2010. And we ran that for a year and then he was too busy with work and left me. So I just continued on my own because I like podcasting. I think it's fun. It's a great way to connect with people around the world and the guests on the show become friends. And I get to meet people at conferences. It's just something fun. And I've kept with it. Now, the coach Debbie Potts show, as you know, is a new name. It was called the low carb athlete. The whole athlete shut the front door. I just couldn't find the right name since we did fit fat fast. So just tying it all together, my own name, how you can be fit and healthy as we age what the summary says on my blog and podcast that I share my experience frequently discussing how adrenal fatigue or HP axis dysfunction led me to rethink about my training methods and lifestyle. Debbie emphasizes the importance of addressing chronic stress, balancing exercise intensity, and personalizing health protocols to prevent burnout. Prevent. You don't want to wait till you're burned out and then come to me help. I want you to come see me before you get burned out. My or her message centers around thrive as you age and integrating bio-individual approaches, focusing on holistic health, avoiding the pitfalls of overtraining and under-recovery. Debbie often refers to her journey as a cautionary tale for the endurance athlete and high performer who may be at risk for a similar burnout. She uses her platform to educate others about warning signs of adrenal fatigue, chronic stress, and how to manage them effectively with that, with her holistic method approach, which includes eight elements, nutrition, exercise, sleep, stress management, movement, digestion, gut health, hydration, and happiness. Through these stories, Debbie aims to inspire others to prioritize their long-term health, avoid chronic stress and burnout, and adopt a more balanced approach to their own fitness and wellness journeys. The HPA access progression describes how chronic stress can dysregulate the body's stress response system, leading to a various stages of dysfunction and in extreme cases, adrenal exhaustion as myself. So remember to go back to this picture and you can see where I was heading towards down in the exhaustive phase. That's when I figured out I had problems. So that's what my mission is, is to help you realize when you're over here in the yellow to orange section, I don't want you to get to the red. And that's where I was going. And if I didn't stop and have problems as I did, I wouldn't have realized. And it's a whole chapter in my book of when I was at Todd Durkin Mastermind Retreat and I was doing fasting and low carb keto only eating fat and went to do sprint workout before we went on a bus ride and had alcohol and people are telling me to loosen up and have fun. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to have a drink. Well, I was throwing up, passed out in the bus and was sick for a week. So something was wrong. I couldn't take any alcohol. And I knew something was up with my nutrition and exercise. So how does HP axis dysfunction unfold? So we have this stage one here, this acute distress that's normal function. So we have that acute stress response. That's a healthy response to stress. The hypothalamus detects a stressor to be physical, emotional, environmental, and that signals the pituitary gland. Then the pituitary gland signals to the adrenal glands, prompting the release of cortisol and adrenaline, which helps the body handle the stressor 
by raising energy levels, increasing focus, and preparing for fight or flight or freeze, we say now. Once the stressor is removed, the body returns to its balanced state of homeostasis and cortisol levels drop. Now, in the next stage, if you have non-stop stressors, frequent or chronic stress, the HPA axis system remains activated for more than it should, leading to consistently elevated cortisol levels. So that would be higher than normal. And then we have this hyperactivity. Now, this is where cortisol levels remain high. The individual may feel tired but wired, have bursts of energy, but this accompanied by feeling tired at the same time, I just said tired but wired, symptoms as irritability, sleep disturbances, digestion issues. Remember, you can't eat and digest food in sympathetic nervous state, nervous system. Slight immune suppression might happen. The body's compensating for this increased stress load. The constant demand for cortisol is unsustainable. If you keep going and don't get help, then you reach resistance, the next stage. As the chronic stress continues, the HPA axis becomes dysregulated. The adrenal glands struggle to keep up with the demand for cortisol. The stress response system becomes less efficient. Symptoms become more pronounced. The body might still produce cortisol, but it's not at the right time or amount which is why we do the Dutch test and learn about your cortisol rhythm throughout the day, your metabolized cortisol as well. So symptoms here are fatigue, trouble waking up in the morning, afternoon energy crashes, insomnia, irritability, mood swings become more severe. You may be experiencing cravings for sugar or caffeine to compensate for the lack of energy. Immune function may be compromised, leading to more frequent illnesses. Now, if you really are stubborn, don't get help. You get to the next phase where you're more exhausted and the cortisol production decreases even more. Now your body's ability to manage stress is impaired and the individual may experience a bunch of random things that you don't really put together. I hit my headphones, sorry. We've got chronic fatigue. Chronic fatigue that does not improve with rest, low blood pressure, dizziness, fainting, depression, anxiety, brain fog, poor immune function, frequent infections, hormone imbalances, leading to disruptions of thyroid function, sex hormones, because the HPA access, also HP, talks to the gonads and to your thyroid. Weight gain or difficulty losing weight, especially around the abdominals, and sense of feeling overwhelmed and unable to handle stress. This was me, exactly. I had immune system down, so I had parasite, I had gut, leaky gut issues, I had a ton of food sensitivities, I was having naps in the day and wide awake middle of the night. So this is what we used to call adrenal exhaustion. It's more HPA axis dysfunction. So it's very controversial, but it's also thought to be mitochondria issues, right? It's also called cell danger response is another theory. Either way, I call it burnout and breakdown of metabolic chaos. When we reach burnout, so to speak, our body's not responding adequately to stress. Our cortisol levels may remain low. The body's unable to respond to stress and we may experience extreme fatigue, constant sense of well overwhelming, inability to handle even small stressors. You're moody, you're anxious, you're depressed. We have chronic inflammations, infections, just loss of resiliency and overall poor health. This is where I don't want you to get to. So if we can get you awareness of this early compensation stage, chronic stress, we can fix you in a few weeks. And then you go to resistance. Well, it's going to take a little longer. But here, burnout, breakdown of the body systems, that is taking me years. 
because I had to change my way of life. And until I moved five years later after this happened, I wasn't going to really get better unless I changed my ways. You can only take so many supplements. You can't out supplement poor lifestyle habits and you cannot out exercise poor nutrition habits and you can't exercise chronically just volume, high volume. It just does not work. So stress management, meditation, I don't really do, but nature walks, yoga, mindfulness, breath work. I do the sauna, going for a walk in five minutes. So I'm going to wrap this up. Nutrient dense foods, getting my B vitamins, magnesium, adaptogens, uh, mushroom adaptogens, ashwagandha, rhodiola. I make that in herbal teas, vitamin C, really prioritizing sleep. I am boring during the week. I go to bed at eight o'clock. I prioritize my sleep so I can wake up and I go to the gym at five in the morning. I'm an early riser forever. So that's what I do best. Now I can't stay up late. I choose not to drink a lot or ever alcohol. I, I don't want to sacrifice how I'm going to feel the next day. So I prioritize sleep and recovery exercise, avoiding overtraining, focusing on low intensity, restored exercises is what I had to do for a long time. Not doing anything over 45 minutes, keep my heart rate low, do more yoga. Don't do stressful power, hot yoga, but more restorative yoga and walking and doing just easy exercise and strength training. Now, functional testing and support is key as a Dutch test, a gut stool test, blood chemistry, mycotoxins, hair tissue, mineral analysis, that all costs money, but it helps. So we can prioritize what labs you need. But I must emphasize the importance of working on what you eat, when, why, and how. Reduce your fasting, make sure you're getting the protein, spreading your meals throughout the day. And recognizing the signs of early on that you're having adrenal or HPA access or metabolic chaos, some imbalances. I am obviously passionate about this topic. This is why I'm focusing the last four years of just doing this full time, trying to help people along with my Pinoy metabolism testing. I'm doing a person because I think it's testing and not guessing is so helpful figure out to meet you where you're at. So we work on nutritional therapy, intake forms, working on meal timing, mindset, working on gratitude, play and laughter is really beneficial. What you need to do to make yourself happy, laugh, who should you surround yourself with, right? So all these things we need to work on, avoiding or eliminating those toxic energy robbers, Working on food that makes you feel good and doesn't throw you into a blood sugar roller coaster or food addiction binge fast, right? So we got to work on what foods are your trigger foods if you tend to overeat. Now, it says here, I emphasize high fiber vegetables, healthy fats, proteins. I'm more about nutrient density. I'm questioning the whole theory on fiber lately, but healthy fats, proteins, and organic vegetables, I'm more looking at root vegetables and berries in season and making sure I'm not having the anti-nutrients. Now, digestion optimization we work on, as I said, the functional lab testing, personalized nutritional therapy, intake forms I do, and lifestyle habit changes. So you can learn more about my journey, my story, how I work as a coach. I put all into this blog post and I found the videos that I talk more for the female athletes on chronic stress and talking about weight gain and insulin resistance was a big topic I threw in here, immune dysfunction, parasite infection, gut health, how that all came about from chronic stress. So rabbit hole on that and just how we need to work on stress management, identify the external stressors and the hidden sources of internal stress you only know if you do the functional lab testing. But don't wait until you have problems. I put in the signs and symptoms of high cortisol for you in here, another video, and then low cortisol signs and symptoms. So you can check out that. What is the relationship of cortisol and thyroid function? Really important to dive into as well as gut health, mitochondria, oxidative stress, your metabolism. What is the connection? It's all, your body works together. So body system, 
burnout and breakdown video. All that's in here. So I'll do another video for you, but just looking at my story, I wanted to share some of that with you. And so I will put this link in the show notes so you can learn more about my recovery journey and how I can hopefully help you avoid going through what I went through. Thanks for listening. And let me know if you want to go more into this topic. I will continue to do more follow-up videos.